Well, hello there, my fellow miners and crafters. Good times. Oscar here, bringing you another super awesome Minecraft episode. And in today's episode, we return to our bridge building project, where we're building quite the modern bridge here. In this episode, we're going to rise the pillars of our structure. As you can see, one of them is built down there, and it will soar into the sky. So let's get this episode underway. All right, welcome back to Scarland. Hope everyone is doing well as we start working on our project again. Now, there's been a few changes that I want to go over before we get started here. And this is the first thing. We are going to extend this side of the platform out two more blocks. So I believe the total will be 114 blocks all the way down to the end from here. There has been a slight change of plan or a slight design change. So I'd started the video of this episode and as I was going along, I was realizing, wait a second, you know, I think I can completely change what I was going to do and make this a lot better than what it was going to be before. I kind of gave it my classic Minecraft stare for a while. I'm like, what are you looking at? And I was staring at it, like trying to figure out how this could be better. I should I should record my Minecraft stare where I stare at a Minecraft, you know, structure something looking for how to make it better. So what we're going to do is this pillar is going to be a slightly different design than I was planning. So we're going instead going to do two blocks this way, two blocks that way, and block, block. So when it's up there, this part's a little bit longer. It just, it'll look pretty cool once it's all kind of built up. So I put these little pillars here, trying to kind of measure out. These are spaced out 10, and then at the end, each one's spaced out by seven. So I think that should be good. So we're going to cut down here. We are going to get out our wool because at the bottom of the ocean, down at the bottom, we're going to do wool up until the surface, and then we'll do quartz from there so we don't waste any blocks unnecessarily. All right, so we're going to don our wetsuit. There we go, and we're going to dive down, 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 down. All right, they're really not that deep. Okay, so we're going to place a block. Let's see, one goes, one, one will go here. Here, I believe, yes, yes, here we go. Two over here. And let's bring that guy up and bring you up. Okay. All right. So we'll just start to bring these guys up and it should be good. We don't need to do anything in this middle piece here. And there we go. So this will just act as a column going down as a structural support and do not waste, you know, quartz. We don't want to waste quartz underwater. There's just no point to that. So uh, the wool will be perfect. There we go. We're going to place quartz on top because part of the quartz stick out. And if you're building something similar along with me here, if you're using a texture pack and the wool and the quartz are completely different in some way, just go down about two more blocks. And then at that point, you, you barely even see it at that point. All right. So I am going just going to stick that right there. All right. So here we go. So we're just going to bring this up. We, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, we're making mistakes. I'm not going to make a mistake. I'm not going to make a mistake. So we're going to go from the surface here exactly 141 blocks. So I am going to make sure that is perfect because we are going to base everything off of that. So, whoops, 142. Oh, okay, I'm actually going to leave that in there because I will do something with that other block. So from the surface of the water, we're going to go 141 blocks up. There we go. So let's just cruise up here because this will be the pillar that will kind of scale everything from here. So this needs to be pretty precise. And I should have put my feather falling boots on because I do not want to die. Okay. All right. I'm going to just put that block down. All right. So now we just need to, let's see, is there any way? No, I'll die if I jump from here. Uh, it's going to be a death. So we'll have to go back down here. There we go. Definitely put on them feather falling boots after this. All right, so we'll just place them along here. There we go. And then from that one pillar, we can base all the rest off of. Perfect. So we'll just line these all up. There we go. So it's 41, and then I'll put another block on top in the center just to kind of act as just a small decorational block. Oops. Didn't want to waste that. There we go. Perfect. And let's see, we'll put those along there. And we'll need to cut this out like so. And we'll just bring these guys up here. There we go. So once we get this, should be just about good now that we've got kind of the base down here. Finish up, let's see. Actually, I can probably just leave that one out. Can I? 
Yeah, save save one block. Save one block of quartz. Save him one block of quartz at a time. Okay. So because we are using quite a bit at this point, so we want to try to be mindful and save and all. Here we go. Let's bring this up here. All right. So let's just actually clear our inventory and put as much in there as we can. There we go. Okay. Here we go. So now we're set. So here we go. Up we go. So I wanted to ask you guys about the, I guess, so-called holiday gaming season or something along those lines, when all the developers, you know, delay their releases till Christmas time to kind of take advantage of that. And so it's pretty exciting around this time. We all start getting some new games around, like Battlefield 4 is coming out soon, Call of Duty Ghosts. We just got GTA 4, which or GTA 5? Yeah, GTA 5, which is an amazing game. Absolutely amazing. The detail that went into the game, those designers, they think of everything. They think of everything. The shoes, the flip-flop shoes, they flip and they flop, which is amazing. And let's see, I'm just going to stick one just right here, just in case. There we go. And um, so they flip and they flop. When you get out of the pool, like the water starts dripping off you. It's just amazing. That game is just full of really awesome things you, you can do. You can base jump and golf and tennis, drive cars all around. It's just an amazing game. But then we also have other games such as Battlefield 4. I'm pretty excited about that. I think that's going to be a really fun game for the next two years because that game, they usually do a two-year release it's a little different than call of duty you know how call of duty usually does it's uh i think a little differently where they release a game every year and there's ghosts of course but i'm just really not not too excited about ghosts if call of duty ghost was released at the time of black ops 2 yeah black ops 2 and modern warfare 3 Oh, I would just be ecstatic at this moment. I would be jumping through the hoops. I would have it pre-ordered. This is the first time since Modern Warfare 2 that I haven't pre-ordered a Call of Duty game. I just haven't got really the Call of Duty fever yet, whereas I used to. It's just that, you know, there's just not a lot to it that's got me really excited. If, like I said, if this game would have come out and... Let's see, so if this game would have came out during Modern Warfare 3, so if Ghost would have been Modern Warfare 3... It would have been amazing. We're going to get dedicated servers now of some variant of a dedicated server. They're a little bit vague on some of the details, but it looks amazing. But I'm just not quite into the Call of Duty game anymore. You know, maybe when it comes out, it'll be just absolutely amazing. I'll get back into it. But Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 3 was kind of, eh, it wasn't a great game. Black Ops 2 was a pretty good game. It's just it had a few problems that just kind of buggy, you know, going around corners, died so fast, and some point in the game, it just got annoying, and I just missed the days of Call of Duty 4, kind of that simple game mechanic, every game they add just some new way to die, like new gadgets, this gadget, that gadget, this kill streak. it's just all about upping the game before, and eventually that just gets kind of tiresome, and it's just not quite as fun as it was before. So I really hope Battlefield 4 will kind of take my FPS uh, fix for the year. Hopefully that'll be good. I have always played, I've actually have played every single Battlefield game since they released back in those first World War II games up until now. I kind of took a little break from Battlefield because I actually got tired of it. Same as I am right now with Call of Duty. And it's kind of funny. I played Battlefield and I, you know, I was, I was getting a little tired of it. And when Call of Duty came out, it was just a brush of fresh air and I was like wow this is amazing and then you know Call of Duty starts to get a little bit boring and probably someday Battlefield will get boring again and I'll say where's that Call of Duty so let's see here so we're gonna jump down again Woohoo! there we go so what are your guys' thoughts on the coming games like Black Ops and Call of Duty and any other games that you guys have seen out there like Watch Dogs that looks really fun Assassin's Creed I think I'm going to wait on Assassin's Creed for the springtime. We never get a lot of games in the spring, and I think I'm going to save that game till then, maybe. Play it during that time of the year. I think that would be pretty good. I wish there was more games out in the summer and in the spring. Well, look at that. That looks pretty awesome. That does look pretty awesome. I like that. I like that. Well, of course, we're going to add much detail to it. So my original design was this wasn't here, and this wasn't here, and same on that side. And it looked kind of boring. So by adding this extra layer, it makes this 
a little bit more stand out here and then we're going to do some half slabs in the middle and then we're going to run suspension cables down here it's it's going to look pretty cool so give me one second i'm going to sort out my inventory with some half slabs and i'll be right back okay so here's what we're going to do we're going to do a little bit of force perspective and we're going to start to get up here so we're just going to crank that okay so from here what we're going to do is we're going to go eight blocks up so we're going to go one two three four five six seven eight so that block right there and we're going to bring this guy along there there we go and so we're just going to jump up here a little bit farther there we go and then we're going to we're going to run this along here like so and we're going to do the same on this side there we go perfect so we're going to run that along there like that and then we're going to go up a little higher here now we may come back here and add another row across here and on the bottom but we'll just see we'll, we'll go slow and kind of add detail slowly because you just you know sometimes you just got to kind of look at it so let's see so we're going to go seven now so we're going to go one two three four five six seven so that was eight and then this one will be seven all right so we're going to bring that across there let's double check this one two three four five I completely messed up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. So what we're doing is we're going one less as we go up. And then this will create a little bit of force perspective. It'll make the tower actually look a little bit bigger as the bottom gets smaller as it goes up. And it'll look pretty cool. It'll look pretty cool. So what is this one now? Seven. This will be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go bring that across here so you see force perspective a lot at especially at amusement parks so take Disneyland for instance or theme park to be precise and you'll see it built into most of the buildings to make them look a little bit bigger there's even times when they do it in the reverse like Space Mountain at Disney World is actually reverse for force perspective it's actually made a little bit smaller they sunk it into the ground a little bit so it didn't dwarf the castle so we're gonna go one two three four five there we go perfect and we're just going to go up here there we go and bring this across here another another example would be kind of expedition everest and the chain belt lift so you would see that little uh, mountain to the side and it's a little village is actually really really small but at distance you know it looks pretty good it looks pretty real so is this one four one two three four yes i think so i think so there we go very nice so we'll bring that across there like so there we go and bring that one around there best example would probably be main street at disneyland as you start out the train station the city hall the opera house built a scale but as you continue down the street they actually go down in scale to create a little bit feeling of the castle being bigger so as you go down the street the buildings get a little bit smaller leading up to the castle which is a smaller castle than all the others but it makes it look a little bit bigger than it otherwise would. There we go. So let's go down here. Down we go. We also see another example is sometimes they'll actually plant build, uh, plant fake trees behind a building that might have a huge show building in the back, but the trees make it look like the buildings, you know, only maybe 50, 50 feet behind it. So it's pretty cool how they do that. All right, there it is. So doesn't that look a little bit taller than it did before? I think that's pretty cool. So we need to come up with some lighting solutions for this. We need to figure out how to light this thing up and make it look really nice. And I think that is a really good start to our tower. We might add a little bit more detail, possibly another row on the bottom and on the top of each one of those. I think that might look pretty good. And there we go. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, another super awesome Minecraft episode. And if you believe the video deserved a rating, that would be much appreciated. And until next time, this has been Good Times with Scar, and we'll see you later. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. As you know, we have completed our house building project finally. As you can see, it's all completed and looking good down there. But now we are to wave goodbye and head off into a new direction and start a new project. And that is the larger roller coaster project, which involves quite a few things.